Who's ready for some Nitrous Express content? Stay tuned as I put a Nitrous Express Proton Kit on my 97 Mustang GT. Alright guys, as I already stated, today is the day we're going to install the Proton Kit from Nitrous Express on Horseplay right here. So let's get started. Alright guys, on my 97 GT, using the Proton Kit, the kit does come with um, a good amount of wiring and uh, pieces, but I'm just going to go over some of the stuff that I bought. Um, Nitrous Express, when they do their kit, because it's universal, they don't know every vehicle's wiring needs. So they give you pretty much what will get you by. So I went out and I got one of these. And then I needed some little bit bigger ones, so I got this kit right here. So an assortment of connectors and um, grounds and all that stuff is great to have. And like I said, in this kit... I don't know why all of these was female. I don't know if they're supposed to be an email. Um, I assumed all of them went to the toggle switch. And uh, I didn't use them for that. So maybe that's why I used my own out of my kit. Regardless, um, I found that helped. Now, like I said, they do give you an assortment of wire. But I needed a little bit more wire. I also use these. And forgive me, I do not know what these are called. I got them from a previous job. They're rated up to 40 volts. Actually, this one. No, I'm sorry. They're rated up to 600 volts. And they go up to 12 gauge wiring. Um, these was pulled off of a bus. So they are automotive grade. And uh, it was running heaters and stuff like that. So you need a 9 16 drill bit. Okay. This was $20 at Lowe's. 9 16 wrench this fits all your an fittings perfect so have one of these ready i found the stubby worked way better in getting in certain spots zip ties long short heavy duty small zip ties are going to help you if you're like me you want an assortment of wire loom like I have, and you want uh, big and small. 9 16 drill bit as for the fitting for the shark nozzle. I did not have a 9 16, some of you may, but I did not. And last but not least, some good old tape. So you're running your wires and you've got to, you know, group them all together, wrap some tape around them real quick until you can come back, put the loom, and zip tie them up. Tape helps really good in quick areas. Like I said, with this kit being universal, it does have some uh, quick pin setups that you can make. Um, I just did some quick disconnects. Didn't really care about that. But that's pretty much all I used to install this kit other than time. I needed a lot of time. And it's not because of this kit. It's because of, you know, dropping the kids off from school, the wife, picking the kids up from school, picking the wife up taking care of chores uh, business everything else so yeah all right guys in the back of the trunk we're gonna start with a nitrous bottle now on the SN95 cars a lot of people put them over here I'm gonna put mine over here and the reason for that is there is already um, grommets okay so I'm going to go ahead and set this up where I need to, mark the spots, and get some pilot holes drilled so I can see what's going on. Now, there is a frame, like a extension, that goes from here to here. So this, these holes are um, extremely deep, but it's not on either side of it. So if there's a way to mount that where you don't get in this channel, that would be better because that's where your filler net goes in that hole right there that's that grommet i just released now you can see that channel the way it runs the other hole is up here where i want to run my line out of so you would imagine you'd have to get the bolts 
on the left or the right of that or they're going to be in this and you're not going to have a very good chance of getting it uh, the back side on. Now you can go with some uh, self tapping screws and also you don't want to get too far that way because then you can send with a gas tank. Um, so I'm kind of debating on what to do here as far as mounting but nothing looks too complicated. I just got to make sure like I said I uh, get on this side of this channel here for the frame. So back on this side, my plan is to set the bottle in, mark out the spots, drill some pilot holes and see where they come out at. I might have to reposition it. I'd rather a small little pilot hole than go ahead and drill the big hole and figure out, eh, it's not really where I want it. So let's see where we're gonna be sitting at. So somehow I measured twice, drilled, and this side was off. It's really hard to see around the bottle. So what I've did is I went ahead and put this side in so it's stable. This I measured is equal on both sides. So I measured it from here to there and from here to here. It's 21 on both sides so I know it's squared. So it's the same straight across. And it looks even when I look at it. So now I'm going to screw that in and put the bottle in. So now at least I know where the heck it's supposed to be and the bottle's not in the way. All right, guys, the nitrous bottle is mounted. Can anybody tell me why a nitrous bottle has to be mounted per track regulations? It's called nitrous is so flammable. No, um, nitrous is not flammable. Matter of fact, it even says right on the bottle, non-flammable. The reason is that's under a lot of pressure. This is bouncing around and it breaks the head or the nozzle off this is pretty much like a rocket in the back of your car it has gone through seats i have a flimsy board there it would go right through that it could bust through the trunk there's a lot of issues that could happen with a um wild nitrous bottle running around in your trunk so like i said contents are under pressure and that can break off and that could be an issue especially during a wreck so it don't have to be mounted with anything special just mounted so that if the car flips the bottle does not go anywhere such as right now I'm running sheet metal screws okay because it just goes through here it's nowhere near the gas can nothing moves to where it's going to touch anything and I got them short to make sure the other two are in the channel I couldn't get a bolt on the back side of them over there so I went and did some research and per regulations and stipulations you don't have to have bolts going through you can have self-tapping screws and this thing is it's not going anywhere if it flips over it might that's all you're gonna get but you get that if it's bolted too so i have set myself up for that nozzle it's gonna go straight down into that grommet and we can start feeding it to the front all right guys ignore the airplane they like to fly over when i'm filming i'm somewhat of a celebrity here anyways um i took the grommet out i cut a hole in it where the line would pass through on all these fittings, it specifies do not use Teflon. They provide the stuff that you put on the threads and it says one drop is all you need. So I'm going to start feeding this through, hook everything up, run it to the front, and I'll meet y'all up there. All right. Underneath the car, you see it comes through the frame rail. I added that grommet because I didn't want it rubbing. Just make sure when you pull all this out, you don't just pull the grommet and it goes with it. And I'm gonna find a path to run this probably up with the brake lines and down this side right here I can just zip tie it to the existing lines and we'll go all the way to the front so I haven't cut the zip ties yet but basically you can tell I've just ran it along these lines from the back when it comes out I come straight over zip tied to there and then run it over zip tied to these I run it along the top side of your brake lines the reason I ran it straight over from there is because I didn't want it messing up with the control arm. Now I do have to go by, go back and clip all these zip ties. Um, but that's about it. I'm going to keep running it up and we'll be up front in a second. Ran the line around. Try to tuck it up where it's not the lowest spot. I undid this and ran it up here. Didn't really need a zip tie because it's tight, but I put one here and I ran it up behind there and I'll show y'all where it comes out in the engine. So as some of y'all might know, I have my AC removed. So there's no uh, accumulator or anything anywhere. So mine comes up 
right down here. And I have plenty. I just tied it to this old lawnmower throttle cable just to see. And I have plenty of room so I can mount that. I'll probably have to mount it over on this side even though I wanted it down here hidden. Because I don't think I want to have enough fuel line to go from there all the way to there and there. But we shall see. Okay guys, inside for a little bit under some AC. I wanted to cover the uh, purge install because I was a little um, confused at first because... The Proton Kit has the solenoids together in one unit, like this right here. They're not two separate um, things. So this is going to be the nitrous in. So basically the bottle would normally come straight in. Let's see, it's not, not focusing here. Anyway, the nitrous would go straight into this port. Well, I need to interrupt that feed with a purge valve. Okay, so what I've done is I've went ahead and temporarily set it up. I'm not going to use the purge port. I'm using the nitrous out and the nitrous in. So what you're going to use is this adapter right here. Now, you got this fitting in, so you're going to put this in between there and there. So now that you've got that screwed into the side... Basically, the nitrous from the bottle is now going to come through this adapter. This is going to go to the nitrous in. What happens is, the nitrous is in here. You hit the switch, and it bypasses this unit and makes sure all the air is out. Now, this is blocked. It's going to come out this way. This in is the compression fitting. This is what you're going to use for your um, metal line. Let's see. So the compression fittings for this, basically you, you slide this through when you tighten up the color, the sleeve smashes down and makes a very tight seal. And then you bend this to how you want. Now I do have the dual kit, so I won't be using this one. So now that you have this set up, this is going to screw into there. And this is how it'll look. So the main nitrous line will come in through here. This adapter goes straight to the nitrous in on this. The nitrous out is up top. So straight to the nitrous in. This is the bypass. You got this port block, so it's going to come straight out the bottom wherever you got this ran. This side's the fuel side. The only thing is when you run it like this on this kit is the logo <laughs> is on the back side. Not that it really matters. But if you're picky about stuff like that... Um, yeah, that might bug you. Also, one more thing. You can run this upside down to make the port easier to come out at right there. Also, guys, I just did a little test. I flipped it around. You can make, uh, you can run this upside down so the port is on the top. And, uh, it's under pressure, so you don't have to worry about that. And that's it, pretty much. You just wire this up. Now, make sure you put the supplied uh, stuff on all the threads. Don't forget to do that, or you'll have a leak. All right, guys, we got the line from under the car that comes up. Um, when planning out where the solenoid and everything's going to be, I wanted it hid over there, but that's not going to be... Um, it's not going to be possible because I'm limited by using this port right here, um, the Schrader valve. There's an adapter that I'm going to use, which means when this goes here, I'm limited to how far this can go. Now, why they don't have a 90 degree valve or a longer hose, I'm not sure, but I'm sure with um, all the research, there's a reason for them doing it this way. So I'm going to switch out this valve. Even if your car hadn't been ran in a while, make sure that you got... Um, paper towel or something around because it's going to leak gas. All right, for the um, layman's terms, SN95 guys, um, to 98, the new Edge cars come with the adapter already. But if you got the older body style like me, you have to buy this adapter, which is um, 16179. This is an 11 millimeter, by the way. It's not the same as the other one. Also, 
do not turn your key with no line hooked up to this because this does not have a valve in it remember this is your fuel supply so there's no valve you turn it on it's going to spray gas straight up all right so the fuel line comes out here that's the nitrous line so my solenoid has to be pretty much in that area let's see what right, i can guys, so i have the fuel line going i made a bracket um, I had to put the spacer and I also used this rubber hose because it was touching the fuel line. It's not a lot of pressure, but I didn't. I have the dual outlet purge. I just got it temporary set up. This is a temporary setup, and I'm going to use the word temporary a lot. Um, some of you might wonder why I'm going through all this. Well, I didn't realize this hose was this short. My plan is to put this down here. I got all that room, and it'll be hidden. Okay, and then I'll have plenty of room to run the lines here. But for now, it's just gonna sit right there because that's all the room that I have. So this is temporary and that's temporary because I don't wanna set everything up, drill holes, do everything permanent and then turn around and undo it again in two weeks. So next is gonna be the nozzle. I'm gonna put it in somewhere in this area. Um, it's gotta be a certain amount of length from the throttle body. I gotta look that up again. I don't remember exactly where, but it does have a fitting that you drill a hole and then you put the fitting through the pipe and um, then the nozzle can actually um, screw in so let's uh, figure out where we're at on that all right more mock-up so got the lines going in got them in their respective side and I got these uh, the nozzle what they call the shark nozzle hooked up made sure I got nitrous going to nitrous fuel going to fuel so there's no um, discrepancy in length and basically I gotta see where this can go so you want it about six to eight inches away so I'm gonna put it about equal with that maybe a little bit more in but I'm gonna bring it around and put it on the bottom the reason for that is when I get everything moved and hidden down here that'll be one less thing I have to worry about hiding it's because it'll be under here, hidden away from everything. And now I'm going to show you what you got to do to get this nozzle mounted. All right, guys. One thing I wasn't too keen on um, is this comes out. It comes straight up. I contacted Nitrous Express, and that's the only thing they have. So knowing that this is a 4AN, and this is a male, I knew um, to look for a 4AN um, female to male 90. So I went on Amazon. And found these and these are only like 10 bucks a piece so I grabbed one so now I can come straight out of here and go into a 90 and it won't be sticking straight up now I am planning on possibly um, positioning that in a different manner so that might change in a few minutes um, depending on I don't know what I can figure out and that's how it looks again this piece is um, off of Amazon about eleven dollars. It's a four A N female to four A N male ninety. If you have the six kit, of course you would get six A N. But mine's a whole four A N. Now I did get to ones to uh ninety up here too if I keep it like this. But what I'm I may change this to where the setting up so this would be the top and the two lines would come in you know this way and out that way which is uh, a lot more efficient but I just didn't have the room but I'm thinking I'm going to try to change the bracket to where I can get it to set where it's perfect like um, the ends on one side and the outs on the other side there's plenty of nitrous line to bring it and loop it back around and plug into this side right here so um, if I do it y'all see what I'm talking about this is the fitting that goes on the bottom. So basically you drill a 9 16 hole for your intake tube. Make sure you have a 9 16 drill bit before you start. Um, I had to go to Lowe's last night and pay $18 for a drill bit. But um, it's got a, this part goes through and then it's got a nut on the back side. I don't know how well y'all can see that. Let's go from this way and see if y'all you know, see that down there. So, um, I went a little too far down to reach it with my fingers. They say six to eight inches. So you could probably do it here and hold it with your fingers. I see a lot of people go straight like right here. 
but uh, nevertheless, I got my son to stick his hand in there and hold it while I started it. You can also put a wrench on the back side. Like, so there's the fitting. You put a wrench on the back side and just hold it and then make sure it's like this and screw it in and tighten it up that way. So that's where the shark nozzle is going to go, and that's how it looks sandwiched. All right, guys, there's the new temporary bracket that I made. Yes, again, there's that word temporary because I want to mount it down here, hidden out of the way eventually. But this is how it is now. I got a nice piece of aluminum. It's bolted to the factory strut, bower, strut tower bolt, and then I have a bolt here. I have another bolt, but I dropped the nut. I have to go get it. Yes, it's always something. Anyway, so I showed you all a uh, segment that uh, I did the fitting in the intake tube. Well, now we're to where the jets need to go. And these are what they refer to as pills, and they go in this part right here. So, you want to look at your thing, and whatever shot you want to run, a 35, 50, 75, 100, 125, make sure that you put the right pill that are marked. So if you wanted a 35 shot, you'd run a 31 and an 18, 31 on nitrous, so you'd go to this side, put a 31 pill in, this side fuel, you'd put whatever 18 right here, and then that would be a 35 shot combined. So here is the shark nozzle. Here is a pill, and the writing is on the edge right here on the lip. They're kind of hard to read. But when it goes in, it's got this, I don't know, like shaft, and it slides in to where the dome sticks out, and then you put on the line. So I know the fuel side is the open side of the shark nozzle. All right, so you can see the opening is facing toward the throttle body. Make sure you get all the shavings cleaned out. I still got to go back and do that before I install this, but I wanted to cover that. Also, the fitting, the part that sticks out further goes on the inside and falls through, and then this is the washer that holds it on the outside. If you put it backwards, this will not screw on. Um, I don't think I covered that earlier. So here it is, my temporary permanent setup. Permanent now, temporary because, like I said, I'm going to move it down here. I feel like I say that too much, but at the same time, I feel like there's still going to be one person to say, why is it temporary? So I just got my nitrous ran out of there. Eventually, I will drill holes underneath and come out. But I don't want to do that if I'm moving it because I have to reroute the lines anyway. So I, I will need a longer fuel line to reach over here, and then that's all I need in order to move it. I can even work off of that bracket just by making a 90 down here. Um, got the shark in. Notice the fuel is facing this way where it's going toward because there is an elbow. You want it to face more uh, in the middle. You don't want it spraying this elbow. You want it kind of like that. So that's how I have it turned. Got my jets in, not telling you what jets I'm running yet. So now I can move on to the wiring and we'll start with the uh, main relay for the proton kit. Now we can begin the pesky wiring that uh, most people are afraid of. It's very simple actually. The first thing you need to do is forget what you uh, know about conventional red being hot, ground being ground and all that because on this solenoid or this relay black is actually the power wire your red wire from your solenoids is going to go to the green wire this black wire can be grounded and the actual ground is going to be this if you're not running a fuel pressure um, relay if you was running a fuel pressure relay this would run to activate that but it says if you are not using that, this is going to be your ground. The blue wire is not going to be used. This red wire is the wire that goes to your um, open throttle position sensor. So if you have it on this, it would just go to here, and then that would run to the switch, or vice versa. But uh, I have the TPS um, and window switch. The digital one so it's going to run inside to that so figure out where you want to mount this and how much room you have to move around and start uh, hooking things up it's pretty simple 
Okay guys, I got the red wire going to the green. I've got the blue goes to nothing. White going to the ground right here. Um, this red will go to the controller in the car as far as the RPM and the wide open throttle. The black is the power. I have it going to the battery. And this ground is going to the battery as well. So I have them grounded at the battery. Now this other side um, for the purge, it'll go to the power for the switch. On the purge, it doesn't matter which one goes to power, which one goes to ground. It also doesn't matter how it's activated. If you want this to go to the battery and the switch to turn it on by ground, you can do that or you can run this um, to ground and power. It doesn't matter. Okay. So there's no polarity. There's no on and off with power or ground. Either way, however you want to run it, feel free. So this is what it looks like right now. I had more of the spaghetti. Um, if y'all been paying attention in class, you'll know this is kind of temporary until I can get it moved. Everything will get um, tied up, wire loomed, cleaned up. I got this for right now. And uh, gotta get some more, but. I think once that's on and I cover it and it's over here, nobody's really going to pay attention to that fitting right there and something coming off of it unless they really know what they're looking at. But little Honda Civic guy ain't going to know. And if you look right here, you can't even tell that there's a nitrous line hooked into the bottom. you got to come around here and look. So once I black out the lines, that silver, the braided lines, when I cover it with this, they're not going to stand out and plus that's going to be down in there so as you can tell that's just how i got the nozzles ran right now kind of got them turned up so it'll spray right up uh, once i get it moved i'm not sure how i'm going to run it i thought about running one over here and one over here and coming out the sides but we'll see all right guys so back in here for uh, some of the wiring i decided to use a double den unit that uh dustin customs give me now guys he gave me this double den unit which i made this plate for and all this i'll cover that in a minute but these double den units are uh, getting harder to find they sell online uh in good condition for 100 bucks or more in this condition they'll still sell for 50 or 60. Not only did he give me this for free, but he drove it up to me. So I'm very grateful for that. To put a double den in a 94 to 98 car, you have to cut off the tabs where the old one mounted. Um, just take a Dremel or something and cut it. It's not a huge deal, and uh, it'll snap in. Um, PM Performance has a good video on this, so I will cover that and. Um, in the description i'll put a link in the description if you want to go to a double den and got to see what you got to do i'll let him uh show you the right way all right guys we're going to get started with the wiring but one thing i do want to cover something i was confused on and i started looking at all the the wiring instructions so when you buy the wide open throttle control the tps the window switch it comes with a relay when you buy the nitrous kit, it comes with a relay. In my mind, I'm using two different relays and I'm trying to figure out how to put all this together. This is referring to the same relay for the nitrous as this one is. So one relay is all you use. Now notice on this one, another thing that threw me off, it says the white is for the optional fuel pressure safety cutoff switch that if you are not using it, you ground it. The white is actually for any um, accessory pretty much. So on the wide open throttle switch, it is going to be the blue wire that's going to go to the white relay. It's not going to get grounded like it says. It's actually going to go straight to the blue wire. On the red, the red goes to the switch, but also the red relay wire goes to the switch. So you have to splice these two together and run to the middle of the switch. Make sense? I hope so. Okay guys, you can see with this mess here. I'm using this little device right here. I'm using several of these. And what they do, these pop up 
you put the wire in there, the stripped wire, and then you put it down, the little arm, and it locks, and you can't pull it out. So here it is. It's locked in. So then I'll put tape around this just to make sure it don't get snagged on something and pull up. Since I'm not using my radio, I'm tying into my radio harness. You can go any which way you want to. Um, for the switch source, it's just a signal wire, so it don't carry load because the main power wire goes to the relay, which the relay gets its own power. So it doesn't matter if you tie into your radio, even if you're using your radio, I don't believe. Famous last words. So anyway, on your purge, um, remember one side is going to a switch source. The other side goes um, to the actual purge valve. Um, got my switch 12 volt on the top here. All three switch 12 volts are going to my switch 12 volt on my uh, radio. And then my grounds. Remember, this is grounded at the purge solenoid. These grounds are going to the ground one, which I already uh, loosely taped up right here. So, these middle wires, that's going to be the wires. So, that's going to, this one's going to go to my nitrous kit itself, the main arming. Which, remember, um, it'll go, this wire too will go here. And the wire from the solenoid will go there. And then this is going to be for the bottle heater. So that will run all the way to the back of the car when I get the bottle heater hooked up. Alright. This is going to the red wire on the relay. And the red wire from my controller. Got it going into one spade and it will go in the middle right there now the white wire from the relay goes through the firewall yes it's hooked to a red wire that's all i had to do with at the moment but it goes white goes into the box at the blue so next i need to go from the white wire on the micro switch to the um middle wire over here So on this, it's going to be your middle wire. You're going to tap into that, and then you got to tap into a negative side of one of your injectors for a RPM signal. On your throttle position sensor, your middle wire is the one that you put the tap on. And you notice when you close it, it has like an opening on this side. You can strip out some of the wire, but it's designed to close even if you don't strip out the wire it still cuts through the sheath like that and touches the wire but I strip back some wire and then put it on but that opening is because that's opening for a spade connector so that'll slide right in so there we go spade connector tied into that everything's tapped together now I can put this back up and kind of hide it some get it some tape and hide that wire as it comes out and goes through the firewall to the controller. All right, that wire we just tapped in from the TPMS, uh, the throttle position sensor, is going to come in to the controller. It's going to go to the white cord or white wire right here. All right, guys. Ignore the spaghetti. Uh, we'll clean all this wiring up. The next thing I have to do, which is the last thing I have to do before I do the bottle heater. Um, you have to tie into the injector ground for the tech signal. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to tie into probably this one back here because it's the closest to the firewall and would be the shortest run. Uses the same T-tap that the throttle position sensor used, so make sure you get enough line, clear it out from there, and tie in. Just thought I'd show you all my little tip for these right here. This plastic is extremely hard. Okay, so to crush this and this would be, well, it's pretty hard. <laughs> so my trick is to take this out, put your wire through this piece. Now with your wire running through, crimp this piece on and then pull it back down in there. So then you pull it back down. There are some little uh, 
grooves in here that kind of center this. Just make sure it lines up. Good to go. Plug it in here. Guys, with that being done, essentially the Nitrous Express Nitrous Kit is installed. Now this is the Proton Kit on a 97 Mustang GT. It is installed. So, the only thing that is remaining for me to finish this is the bottle heater that goes into the trunk. But as far as the Nitrous Kit itself, it is ready to be... Um, essentially turned on and the TPS set and all that stuff. Alright, so the last step is the Nitrous Express bottle heater. This is the element itself. There's the wires. Comes with all the, the wiring components. The relay. It's also got these cool features where you just make a basically a plug and play uh, harness. That's what the pins are for. And then it's got the sensor which if the bottle pressure um, is too high it cuts off. If the bottle pressure is too low, the bottle heater turns on. So, there we go. Alright, per the instructions, it doesn't matter which wire on the bottle heater is the ground and which one's the power. Just however it uh, is best set up when you put it. The ground could go to a chassis ground or you can run it to battery ground. It doesn't matter. So, first thing I want to do is get this on the, uh, the, yeah, the relay itself. Uh, so I can run the wire up to the switch before I put the console the in. instructions I got if you notice there are no instructions on these uh, Making these qu quick connects how what goes where uh, I'm sure if I sit here long enough figure it out. I know how these go. I don't know about these little See these little rubber things. I don't know if they go um, Inside of here or there or I, I don't know and I don't know why they would include something and not have instructions on it. Don't make any sense, but I'm not going to use them. So let's jump to the running the wire for the 12 volt switch. All right, guys. So here the whole console is installed. Um, I decided to try it, and for some reason it did not work. Confused, I uh, started looking over everything. The purge worked. So that was getting power. This was the air fuel ratio was getting power. The switches was not getting power. So I went back and looked. See, it shows the outside prong is ground, outside prong is switch. Middle one is whatever you're, um, whatever you're arming. Okay. So in this case, it'd be the window switch. In the other case, it would be the bottle heater. It wasn't getting power. Turns out this diagram for the switch is wrong so on the top post there's a gold post that'll be the ground the middle will be your switch 12 volt and the bottom wire will be whatever accessory you want to work so it is not 12 volt top it is 12 volt middle it is ground on top and it is switched on that so now when I turn it on ignore the beeping we don't have to uh, worry about copyright infringement there because there's no music. So they light up, flip it on, bam. There we go. And, hear that? It's purge valve. So, yeah. One last time. Your signal wire is going to be your bottom wire. Top will be ground. Middle will be your switch 12 volt power. This is wrong. One other thing, I don't know if it's a mistake or if it comes this way for a reason, but every single connector that is this style is female. So like if I wanted to put a connector on that end, right there for the bottle heater, and run the wire in and have a quick, a quick disconnect, um, there's no male in, they're all females. So I went out and got a pack like this so now I have male and female. All right, guys, I got some cleaning up to do back here. But if you look, I still have the power box right there. Um, that was the fuse box for my audio. I'm not running my audio anymore. But uh, I just tapped into that to power the relay right there. And then the ground. And then the 12-volt switched runs up front. I still got to tuck all this up. 
but uh everything is wired for the bottle heater so all i gotta do is put on the gauge put everything up and then get everything cleaned up as far as tucking the wires and putting loom on it and protecting everything but we are uh we're essentially done as far as the install goes this last thing i had to do is put the gauge on remember use this on every nitrous slide these come out fair warning this tank has a little bit of air in it so the first one you take out for the other side it'll uh it'll hiss at you don't let it scare you it's just a little sharp right, yes here's under the hood i got it tidied up the best i can got everything wire loomed up and uh kind of took the way the best i can i even got a wire a line over the nitrous i want to do lines over there but i ran out of loom so i do have to get that um I think that'll be great with uh, keeping stuff protected so it don't rub and uh, also kind of hidden. But I was gonna put it down there, but man, I just I like the the kind of intimidation factor popping the hood and it's just right there. It's like wow. So I think I'm gonna run my purge right there through the cow and uh, be done with it. Kind of digging it now. All right, got some loom over all the nitrous lines. Um, they didn't have black, but Still don't really stand out all that much. All right, guys, please forgive the uh, quality. I am recording at night because I wanted to get this done. Everything is officially wired. I have drilled through down here on both sides and ran it up. Tried to space them out the best I could. So everything is how it should be. With the hood closed. That's where the purge comes out. Have them kind of turned a little bit. So when it sprays, they should go out about 45 degrees from the middle of the car. Interior is put back together. With that right there, I'm gonna put the plugs in there uh, to just block that off. And just like that, they don't do anything. You can get these block off plates and uh, that's where the camera picks up that little crack, but you can't see it. And then uh, right here, I will get a blank and actually put a hole through it. But that's for my data logging cable. So, there it is. Uh, last but not least is the trunk. And there you go. Lines, I got them loomed, got them all together, and they go. And they go back into the uh, power bank or the fuse block that I showed you from the sound system that I no longer have. I guess this has been a journey. Um, nothing too hard. Like I said, it's just time and with my schedule, I only had about 15-20 minutes each day to do a little bit here and there. I'm glad to be all done. Had I had a just complete weekend, I could have did it in two or three days. Uh, that's with filming so not too hard. I hope this helps somebody. I hope y'all like the content if y'all didn't Maybe you need to lower your standards a little. Thank y'all for watching I'm gonna turn around. I done made it this far. Look back now that we'd be too smart. Shoot for the stars even when it gets hard. Put my faith in the Lord with the 60 bars. I won't turn around. I done made it this far. Look back now that we'd be too smart. Shoot for the stars even when it gets hard. Put my faith in the Lord with the 60 bars. I won't turn around. I won't, I won't turn around. No matter how far I go, I'll never.